Hello everyone, good afternoon, happy lunch hour, it's the Rugby League lunch hour here at Love Rugby League Towers with myself James Gordon and Drew Derbyshire. Pleasure to be here James as Drew. always. Well you've got to be here haven't you? Well, I, I, I forget to be here. Nice so, uh... um, obviously new format of the show, we're, we're aiming to, well the Rugby League lunch hour every Thursday 12 to 1 live on the Love Rugby League Facebook page. Um, if you can't join us for that, it will be available via the website, YouTube, and as a podcast uh, after the show's finished. Although Lucy is off this week, so oh, yeah, that might, that might yeah, that might delay the upload process. Um, what we'll do, we'll, we'll talk about, there's lots of transfer talk to go through this week. We'll talk some 895 Cup action from, from last night. We'll talk about a few interesting articles that are on the website. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Great Britain as well, and then we'll look ahead to uh, a, another decisive week of action in, in Super League Championship and beyond. Um, please do leave your comments and if you want us to talk about anything in particular, um, please leave a comment and we'll do our best to debate it. If you want to chip into any of the discussions that, that me and Drew have, please do so. Um, so let's start with, we're going to have to start with Leeds, aren't we, and, and transfer talk, mainly because most of the transfers do involve Leeds. So, um, it's been a bit like swap shop this week. Yeah, um, you know, I, was like, I was only saying to you yesterday, James, that I've never known a Super League season to have so many swap deals. Because you, you, before the season started, it was very, very rare, wasn't it? You came across a swap deal in rugby league. Yeah, so, and, well, I mean, we struggle to come up with some, though, to be fair. Yeah, it's like four uh, or five, hasn't it? Yeah, so, so but, and they've all been uh, revolving around Salford, haven't they? So, uh, you, you guess that obviously Salford can't have can't afford to bring any players in so they've got to do swap deals should we speak about the Rob Lewin one first of all the, well, the, the so Rob Lewin to Iloa here yeah, uh, so Rob, Rob Lewin's joined gone from Salford to Leeds on loan to the rest of the year and then he'll sign a two year deal uh, at the end of the year which goes until the end of the 2021 20, season to Iloa here has gone the other way he's, he's joined Salford from Leeds for the rest of the season on loan and then he'll sign a two-year deal as well until the end of 2021. Uh, I, I've been debating this with a, with a few people as, as to who has got the better deal, though. And I, I believe that Salford have got the better deal because Leeds have actually had to pay Salford 65,000 um, as well as Lola here going to Salford. And Lola here is 24, I think, or 25. And Lola here, uh, and Louis is 28, 29. So, so there's four or five years difference uh, between the pair. And uh, I, d I don't think there's much in it as players. I know, I know Lola here's got a lot of stick this year um, from a lot of fans um, because he's probably not been the player he was at Leeds than what, than what he was at in the NRL for, for West and, and for what we've seen from him from, for Tonga on the international stage. But I think if, if he can perform to his best best ability at Salford, I think they're the club who are winning out of this situation. Well I mean I think I mean the thing is is ultimately Leeds made the decision to sign him less than twelve months ago as you know, not as a marquee player, but certainly as a pivotal he's a player. High profile player isn't yeah, yeah. And, um, and you know for, for, for it to go from that point, you know, with all due respect to Rob Lewis, he's been kicking around in Super League for a few years now, Leeds, you know, Leeds could have signed him twelve months ago if they were that desperate for him. Oh, Although yeah, having it's said a, that, it's, it's a sign of desperation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean that's. Not, I mean, Louis is a good sign. Don't get me wrong. I think it was interesting though that it's interesting you say that at all here because I was having a peek around the Salford Facebook page last night, uh, and there's a very there's a very big split. I think there's a bit of a divide between people who think it's a bad deal for Salford, um, you know. Mainly, mainly, mainly critics of Lola here, it has to be said. Um, there's a split between people who think it's a bad deal for Salford, but then perhaps the more realistic people who look at it and think, well, you know, ultimately Salford aren't really in a position where they can knock back that sort of money. Now, our understanding is that will effectively just cover the salary gap between Louis and Lola here, but from a cash flow point of view, mm. if you're getting that cash now, mm. you know, it gives you a little bit more room. You know, yeah. it probably means that Salford can you know, get through the next few months without having to worry, okay, yeah, they've got to find a bit of extra cash for Lola here in future years, but obviously with the Hastings situation and stuff like that, they, you know, they may have some more mm. cash floating around anyway. Certainly, and the prospects of Jackson Hastings and Tuilola here in their arms is quite exciting in my opinion. And going back to the critics of Lola here, uh, 
Yeah, he's he's not been the player. He's not been half of the. He's probably been average and probably been at fifty percent of what he can be because he he was he was a solid player in the NRL. But I think what Lower here struggled with at Leeds, he was always swapping positions. I think we for for Leeds we've seen him play full back, we've seen him play half back, and we've also seen him in the centre as well. So you can't really get a, a good run of consistency and. He's a bit of a runner though here. He's not an organizer. So and and when he played in the halves at Leeds, he was with Richie Myler, who's also a runner and not an organizer. So none of the none of them were were organized in the Leeds team, and that's what saw the Rhino struggle. Uh, I think with Hastings, Hastings a bit more of that organizer, isn't he? Uh, and Lola here could could hopefully uh, get his running game on the back of it and. You've got now levels coming out of the back. This is an exciting spine for Salford, I believe. Do you, do you think? I mean, I know Lola here mentioned Hastings quite a bit in his in his press release in the quotes when they signed. Do you think? Um, do you think there's potential that Hastings might stay to develop something with Lola here? Well, it, it depends how the partnership goes, doesn't it? If it if it clicks, then there's every chance of Hastings maybe penning penning another one year deal at the Red Devils. But if it doesn't work, then obviously he might think sw- more than twice, and he might think about, about about leaving the club. There's obviously a bit of uncertainty with Salford, isn't there? Because you know you they've already lost. You know Jake Bibby's going, Josh Jones is going. You know you're not sure. The chances Terrible are that Foots is going. Yeah, the, the chances are Salford are probably going to pick up a couple of players from whoever gets relegated. Ultimately, that's well, what's probably going to happen. To our understanding, they've signed Dan Sargent from Wigan, they've signed Chris Atkin, um, Chris Atkin from OKR, they've signed Reese Williams from London and Luke Yates from London. So there's four players coming in already. So, well, we knew they were, they were looking at John, John Johnson from Witness as well. Um, there was also... You know, they're, they're point it, Salford are without yeah. doubt punching them underway, yeah. aren't they, for, with what, what they do. So um, we'll move on from that one. We'll look at another swap deal this week, again involving Leeds. It's Matt Parcel and Sean Lunt. Now, I think me and you have got contrasting views on this. Um, you start with, with with your thoughts on the deal So first. Well, my opinion is... <laughs> I'm so, sorry to all Leeds fans, but Leeds fans, are, I, I believe, we're getting the rubbish end of the stick uh, so, to, so to speak James because I, I rate Parcel I, yeah he's not he's not been the player he was in 2017 when they won the grand final and he got in, into the Super League dream team but I like his, his sharpness out of dummy half and I think that adds a lot uh, when he enters the field off, off the bench for Leeds and obviously I know, I know the Rhinos are about to get um, quarter space free so they can bring Louis in and possibly bring other recruitments in uh, so that's why they've had to kind of get rid of Parcel and bring uh, bring Lunton, an English uh, homegrown player. Uh, but I just think Parcel is very much the better player um, than what Sean Lunt is at this stage in his career. Obviously, yeah, Sean, well, Sean Lunt had, had quite uh, a bad off season, didn't he? He was quite ill over the off season, and uh, I just think he's struggled to recover since then. And in his match sharpness hasn't been there, whereas Parcel is is a complete opposite. And he's very um, has a lot of zip, doesn't he? I yeah, think. He I mean, a, a I mean, he, I, th- I mean, obviously, Lunt, obviously, if Lunt can stay injury free, I think Lunt's probably the sort of player that Leeds need. They need a bit of a, a bit of experience, someone who can. And I'm not saying that Parcel hasn't got that, but I just feel like you look at that Leeds team, and they just lacked a little bit of, you know, no one. Parcel doesn't strike me as a sort of player who like take a game by a scruff and neck and sort of mm-hmm. guide his teammates. He's you know, he's a good player as an individual. But I think maybe as Lump being brought in a bit more for a bit of leadership quality, I don't know. But the thing with Parcel that, that gets, that's certainly what he's been brought in for, isn't it? And it, I think he's is he thirty two, thirty three. Yeah, yeah. And obviously uh, he's playing you know he obviously won a grand final. So, so, well. so there is an, a bit of unfinished business though uh, from what Lump will believe, but I just think Leeds are a lacking pace, aren't they? Yeah. They, they, but Richard then Dwyer, Rich... but then Dwyer brings that, doesn't he? And it's like you know, you sort of think Lunt's quite a nice foil for Dwyer, maybe. And, you know, if mm. you can play two different styles of play there. Now the thing with Parcel that gets me is how has he gone from twenty seventeen dream team to then? Because like he was being marginalised last season as well, wasn't he? It's, it? it's like, it's what, what has madness. possibly happened? Yeah. He, you know, you know, he's, as he. He must have, I don't know what he could have done, but for him to be marginalised from where he was in 2017 to, you know, last season he was getting sort of squeezed out and then this season it's just being like he didn't exist. Just, how, uh, it all depends on the spine for me because it, if, you, if you remember the spine in 2017 for Leeds, it was a lot different. You had, well, Jack Walker was just coming through. Um, I think he played about 10 games in 2017. 
uh, but you also had Ashton Golden, so that, so he was working with them at full back, but then it was the main position being in the half. Yeah, you had Danny Maguire and Rob yeah. Burrow in 2017. And it's all about how the spine works in a team. It's not about individuals, it's how the spine works or how the, how the hooker links up with the half backs, how the half backs link up with the full back. And in 2017, it was it was firing or firing or not. But um, is it Parcel's fault? The but why is Par is it is it why is Parcel being made the scapegoat to that? Why is the solution to the spine surely isn't get rid of one of them? Surely it should have been to bring in players in other positions. Now, obviously, you could argue that they should have been looking at a one six seven nine this season of Walker, Lola here, Myler, and Parcel. And obviously now they're looking at Walker, is, Walker, yeah. Louis. Myler and Lund, which to be fair, sounds like a bit stronger, but then at the same time... But but the recruitment's been poor, hasn't it? In, in, in hindsight, even though I'm a, I'm a fan of to be all here, they probably they shouldn't have signed him because he's the same player as Richie Myler. Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah the, without, the without that, there's no way poor. he should have played any games at fullback, in my opinion, no. because they've got Jack no. Walker, who'll be the fullback for 10 years, potentially England fullback. They've got goal. I mean, Ashley Golden. I don't think he'll be at Leeds for much longer, but he's still there. Yeah. He's on a you know, he's on a four-year deal. You, 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 so you play Golden over law here at fullback. Well, yeah, you play. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, he's, I mean, Walker's got a few injury issues, hasn't he? But yeah. you've got Golden there who can slot in and play at fullback. So Lola here for me, when they signed him, it should have been he's a number six yeah. and that's it. And obviously, what's happened is he's come. They've obviously not been convinced. Like yeah. I say, is he too similar to Myler? Because I mean, I like Myler. He's a support. He is what he is. And I think Myler's one of these players, and I've seen it with it. There's a few players like this where they're really good at what they do, but then when the part, when they when the, the team that they play in recruits a, a halfback that's too that's similar to them, players like Myler start getting criticised for not being something that they never were. If yeah. you know what I mean. So people are criticising Myler for not organising and whatever. Well, that's not his game. The reason why he's a good player is because he's a support runner, because he gets involved. You know, we saw, you know, obviously I, I watched Witness quite a lot, so Joe Mellor is a good example of when Kevin Brown left Witness, all of a sudden, Joe Mellor was getting criticised. He was playing exactly the same as he was when Kevin Brown was there, but he was getting criticised because people were expecting him to do a job that mm. he's never done, just because his halfback partner was doing it. So it, it's going to be interesting. It'd be really interesting to see how it works this Sunday. Um, who, who can we go for uh, in terms of an organising halfback? Well, I mean, they've got Louis now, so... Yeah, but is he an organizer? I, I think I, I think you'd have I think Louis would Louis organize it. I think I think Louis probably a better foil well, for Myler than well, what, than Lola here was. And what what's baffled me a bit with with Lee this season is that is the chopping and changing. It's not just Lola here who's been chopping and changing. It's been everyone in the old team. Mm. How, how many times has Sutcliffe played in the halves this season? How many times even Cameron Smith's played in the halves for for Leeds this season as well as Myler as well as Lola here. But when when you're just chopping and changing like that, it's, it's not yeah, going to work need, because you, can, you just can't get consistent. You need to, at you all. Need to be It's quite a big game this week. We'll talk about the games later on in, in the show towards the end. Um, a few more transfer deals. Hull have brought back Mahi Um for Fant next season. Yeah, fantastic sign, that isn't it? And we were having a bit of a chat about this before in the office. Hull's back line. Is pretty. He's looking pretty formidable now. I'm big. Yeah, yeah. So I'm obviously big. they've got you got Jamie Shaw. You've got Adam Swift coming in. You've got now Logo who's ripping up trees. You've got Farimo. You've got Fanua. You've got Josh Griffin. You've got Jake Connor. Have I missed anyone? No. I you think that's you know they got. Oh, we were talking about Mike Dawson Jones yeah. before. They've got Buchanan, the young lad who's been doing okay. Like some real options, mm. obviously Sneed and um, Kelly. So, so if, uh, if, if everyone's fit on the day, what, what what's your back five being though? Uh, and do you, uh, do you, it all depends on where you play Jake Connor, doesn't it? I, I it, think Connor's got a player. Though you were talking about him being the 14 and being an interchange, but I think Connor's got a player. You look at that game against Castleford recently that Hull won, that Jake Connor was, was outstanding. I think he's got to be, even if you're not playing him at six, you've got to play him at centre. So your centre is. I like him as an halfback. Well, but I do, but they've got, got Kelly got, and Sneed here. So I, I, think, I think nine times out of ten, Connor should be starting at centre. He I might play the odd game. I don't, I don't, yeah, but in, t in Super League, he's a centre, but on the international stage, he can't be a centre because he's too small. Who, Jake Connor? Yeah. Well, is he any smaller than Mark Purcell? And that's why he doesn't play for England. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, so yeah, to answer your question, I think I'd go Shawl. Um, I'd go Shawl, I'd go 
See, Swift's an interesting one because he, he's obviously got to play because he's left St. Helens to play. So you'd imagine Swift's going to have to be a starter. So you're going Swift for newer. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's too hard. <laughs> I, I, no, I, 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 I think you might go. I, I think you I, might I, go Swift, Griffin, no. Connor for newer. Swift. No, because I, I think I think they'll push Griffin into the back row because of the size of him. I think they'll go short full back. Farimo and Swift on the wings. Fenua in the centres, and it all oh, dep- it all depends where Connor plays. It- he's, he's got to play centre, I mean, because Ke- Kelly and Sneed are your first choice half backs. That that there's no debate there. Yeah, yeah, because Sneed over just signed yeah. a new deal as so, well. So Hull in a really good place. Mm. Um, we were talking before they potentially couldn't. You know, obviously it's the derby tonight. They could move within two points of Warrington, who play St Helens tomorrow. Um, you know, Hull really. You know, they're in a bit of form now, they've shrugged off this little... Well, they'll probably end up getting beat 30 nil now, I've said that, but they've seemed to shrug off this inconsistency thing. You know, they've got the cup semi-final, you know... They're all, got bit... they're all sipping in for Wembley, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think they've got a chance this year, Hull. Um, no chance. We'll move, on from, we'll move on from that into some other news. Great Britain assistant coaches, Danny Ward and Ian Watson. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm quite happy with them appointments, to be fair. I think the, the, the two top young British coaches in the game and uh, I tweeted earlier on the week we both bat above uh, the weight don't we uh, in many respects especially with the the resources and the, the budget that Ian Watson works with at Salford uh, he's doing a cracking job where did he sit in the table is it fifth, fifth, fifth yeah. at the moment Above and uh, and they won't become Friday night but uh, Danny Wall's doing a, a, an unbelievable <laughs> No, well, no, one would have, no one would have thought at the start of the season Danny Ward will be in this position with, with London Broncos right now. Me, me included, we're tipping him to win yeah. two or three games if that all season. The thing is with Danny Ward, he's only been a head coach for 18 months. That's yeah. where you've got to look at it. Um, please do leave your comments and, and stuff as well. We'll try and raise I hope we've not got any comments yet. Yeah. Not one. Are we mute? Um, not one. <laughs> Another one um, from Championship signing Toulouse have signed Junior Vivi from Hull KR. Um, believe they fought off Lee for that signing. Well, that that was another. That was what kickstarted the whole merry-go-round, wasn't it? At Leeds and Hull KR, um, Junior Vivi leaving. I, I quite like Vivi as a as a player. It's a solid option for a centre or a winger. Uh, it'll go well for Toulouse. Obviously, they're trying to get promoted into into Super League this season. A uh, solid signing. Uh, Lee are also throwing the cash about, aren't they? Yeah, uh, really, really stopping for the rest of the season as well. Um, Corey Patterson recently re signed. Gaz Ox recently re signed. Uh, you, you, you've done a Lee United. Yeah, Lee United. We have to keep updating it. Yeah. So I, th- I think we're up to 13 now. So um, it, it's going to be interesting because the pressure is going to be all on Toronto, isn't it? So you've got. I, I, Toulouse and Lee are capable, I think, of beating Toronto. On a, in yeah, a one-off game, yeah. um, I, I, I think Lee will will get get promoted. I think I think their mindset's the best in the competition. Yeah, uh, uh, ultimately you get to that million pound game, and oh well, the championship final, whatever they're going to call it this year, and the pressure's going to be all on Toronto in it because they lost that last year. There's question marks over what will happen next year if they don't yeah. go up. And um, yeah, championship. The, the, the thing with Toronto, the it just always seems to be someone coming and going, doesn't they? Mm. Uh, with the Wolfpack. I know they've not had any action. He's uh, been a bit quiet this the year, I think. Market for a while, but there always just seems to be loans. And I, think they've lost, I, I, I think they've lost a little bit of momentum this year because I think, obviously, they weren't expecting to have another year in the Championship, were they? And I think that's maybe quelled a little bit of the enthusiasm. Um, you know, and ultimately, that's the harsh reality of sport. You know, they've had two seasons where they've ripped it up and it's like well you're not going to rip it up forever and a day and if you did everyone would get bored after 10 years anyway do you know what I mean um, we've got one question Carl Camp says have you heard anything with uh, Fecky to cash from Cronulla we understand it's a done deal uh, choose the man for them yeah um, let's talk about 1895 Cup so last night was the 1895 Cup quarter final some absolutely belting matches so the R League Live match was York against Batley. It went to Golden Point extra time. Batley prevailed 17 16 after York had actually scored a penalty with basically the last kick of the game to force extra time. Lee beat Barrow 19 18. Uh, that was at St Helens. Lee fought back. Um, they were 18 16 down, got a penalty to level it up 18 all, and then 
Martin Ridyard kicked the winning drop goal. Barrow missed a drop goal attempt late on. League One, Doncaster very nearly caused an upset and got into the semi-finals. They were 28-12 up against Sheffield, but ended up going down 32-28. And then Widnes beat Dewsbury by 54 points to 6. And nearly forgot it was 38-2 at half-time. The second half was very, a bit of a very non-event. So you've got Widnes, Lee, um, Batley and Sheffield in the semi-finals of the 89 95 Cup course. The final will be played at Wembley after the Champions Cup final. The draw... Is tonight six thir- uh, tonight being Thursday six thirty? Um, BBC Radio really Merseyside. BBC Radio really Merseyside. The semi finals are going to be played on Sunday the twenty eighth of July, which is the day after the Challenge Cup semi finals. Um, they're not at neutral ground. It'll be at the grounds of the home. Whoever's drawn out the hat first, basically. Um, I suppose the cynics amongst you will be uh, predicting a witness and Lee will be kept apart. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tipping it to be a Lee Witness final. Yeah, I just, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying anything more than yeah, that. Right, right. right. um, <laughs> let, let's, let's talk a bit about what's on the site. Obviously, you know better than anyone what's on the site, but I wanted to talk about one in particular that you put on today. Um, we were talking about Australia tour. So, Australia apparently touring, it's not being announced yet, no, but apparently no touring details. next year, 2020, coming over to England, um, basically to give England. It's to do with the World Cup, isn't it? It's a lead into the World Cup. The, uh, the World Cup organisers wanted Australia to come over so they could get some test matches scheduled um, and, and give England a real test leading up to obviously the 2021 World Cup in England, which England, of course, aiming to win. So, Australia coming over, there's been hints that they're going to come over and do uh, a proper tour where they play a few tour insides and all. Uh, yeah, I think I've got a little bit of breaking news here. Um, Lucy Gordon, Carl Watkins won't play for Leeds on Sunday against Catalans. He has been prevented by the NRL. From wow. playing his last ever game for the well, Rhinos. We, we were saying this because it's, 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 it's the almost oh, the 30th, isn't it? Um, yeah. So the first is on is it, Ah, yeah, but listen to this. Uh, hang on, let's try and work this out. 3 pm in England. Kick off. 3 pm in England on Sunday. Is that 1st of July in Australia? Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, in theory, 5 pm, isn't it? Because it's when he finishes. Is it something to do with that? Do you know what I mean? I need to Google the Gold Coast time zone. Yeah, what time is it in Gold Coast now? Someone work that out. And uh, yeah, it might be to do with that because I suppose. I mean, it's a shame for him, but that's life, isn't it? I suppose. It's, it's just a shame he doesn't get the send off he deserves because he, he obviously thought, and everyone else thought he was playing his last game. Yeah, but well, they can wheel him out and give him a round of applause at half time and all that sort of stuff. It's plus t- plus um, ten. It's half nine now in Australian Eastern time. The goal call. So the nine hours ahead of us. Yeah. So. So five o'clock. It won't be. It won't be. I've cracked it. I've cracked it. There you go. Oh, what can I say? It's, so, it literally kicks off as it as it turns July the first. The game. Right. Well, is, there any, is there any way Lee's making it an half twelve kickoff on Sunday? <laughs> so Watkins Watkins can play under contract. Well. Maybe. Um, anyway, well, that's a nice one. That'll be one for you to type up once we finish with this. Well, um, uh, well, anyway, we've just got a couple more comments. Oh, on. I think they're all flooding in there from before. Um, uh, David uh, Gledall says, well done, Batley. A fantastic performance uh, from them. Louis last night. Frey with the drop goal. And uh, David also adds that it's a uh, great signing for FC more to come. I assume he's on a mate yeah. to Mahe Fenua. Uh, the Tongan tank. They, they, they probably do a they probably do a forward or two, couldn't they? All? Yeah, that. Well, uh, I might uh, say unless unless we're looking at Griffin, well, you know, over, winter back row. Obviously, we're probably expecting Mark Minicello and uh, Seeker Manu to depart at the end of the mm-hmm. season. Joe Westerman's apparently signed a deal with Wakefield. Uh, Danny Washbrook uh, is in an the squad now, so is it his last season at the club as well? So you, you'd yeah, expect they'll, they'll, they'll have a lot of caps. Would they look at Fremo as a back row? Or even Fenua. Fenua, Fenua, Fenua with the size of him could, could easily play in the back row. You know, um, could, you, could you, are they looking at maybe they put Fenua and Griffin out there? I, I, I definitely expect Josh Griffin to play in the back row next season because he, just of his body type, uh, he's, he's, he's tall, he's, he's, he's big for a centre now. Uh, <coughs> he certainly swatted uh, Sam Tompkins if, off. Yeah, he? If, he, if he can have a big pre-season, he could certainly just mould himself into a back rower. But with, with a couple of... The, 
of outgoings because I mean, you'd assume Ma- Minichello and Manu are on hefty wages at home yeah, because they've yeah, been yeah. there a couple of years. I mean, I mean Westerman as well. He'll free up a bit of, yeah. bit of cap, so um, so yeah. Um, well, uh, Scott Johnson, Hall being linked with Manu Manu uh, from Parramatta Eels. Yeah, we, so good they named him twice. Yeah, so good they named him twice. Yeah, he's he's another big player. I think it's someone international. Um, so there'll be plenty of uh, activity at Hull, which was promised by Adam Pearson last yeah. season, if we remember. Yeah, they, they obviously they tried. To, I mean, I don't know whether it, you know, was it? Could you say they tried to recruit on the cheap last year? Obviously, they brought in Danny Langtry and obviously Matty Dawson Jones got injured early doors, didn't they? Um, going back to what we were just talking about, the Australia tour next year. Um, there's been some. Manu Mao about, actually, it's not Manu Manu. Oh, it's just, well, he sounds better Manu Manu. Though. Um, Manu Australia tour coming over next year. Um, obviously to play England, but. There's a bit of a conversation about would they play other 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 teams. So like there was a there was talk about maybe playing say St Helens, um, you know a bit like the olden days before our time when the touring team used to come over and play the club side. It's a bit more difficult these days, isn't it? Because the season's finished. Whereas back in the day, obviously yeah. the Australian season, uh, the Australian season was through the summer and the English season was through the summer. It, when the when the tour and Australians were coming in October November, it was yeah. the peak of the English it, season. It's, it's going to be a difficult, isn't it? Because obviously players week holidays and everything like that mm. at the end of the season, um, and some clubs uh, we don't like to mention names, but some clubs mention to players about in, uh, representing teams at international level uh, that uh, it's advised that they they, they shouldn't do. At the end of the season, so I don't, I don't think I don't know how exactly they'll get permission mm. to, to. There's play also the injury the thing, season. isn't it? Because obviously a lot of players play through injuries and then have surgery or whatever in the off season to get make sure they're ready for for the following season. Um, but go on, we we've had a discussion about six potential teams that could be cobbled together to face Australia. Yeah, so obviously the the county teams of uh, to. Uh, to possibly return Lancashire, Yorkshire, Cumbria. Um, I'm, I would like to see county teams return. Uh, I don't know about you, James. I think they'd have a lot to offer, especially against the Kangaroos in midweek games, because it would give the op- uh, players an opportunity to maybe catch the eye of Wayne Bennett and his coaching staff uh, at, at potential call-ups to the England squad. Um, so I'd definitely, because I'd be ch- for, for Lancashire, for example, you might, you'd have fringe players of the England team uh, the likes of Joel Burgess, Stefan Ratchford playing, uh, so they'd have the chance to to impress uh, Bennett for Yorkshire. You could have Liam Watts, um, Jamie Greg, Shaw. Greg Eden, Jamie Shaw, uh, Oliver, Oliver Holmes, Max. Um, yeah, uh, no, he's, he's an older one. No, well, well, they, well, well they yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, can, uh, names out for there. Cumbria, Carl Amor, Brad Singleton, Sean Munton, as we was mentioning before, uh, Ryan Shaw. So, so you can have a, a decent, a decent bunch of teams there. And, and of course, they wouldn't have to just play that one game. They could play each other. Yeah, of course. Uh, and uh, the problem uh, is, he's obviously fitting it all in, isn't it? Because yeah. obviously, the, the season, the domestic season runs till sort of start of October. You know, ultimately, if if they're playing games in October and November, you're only getting December off effectively yeah. until until you come back again. Yeah, so. It, it, Again, it all just depends on the permission granted by the RFL and, and, and the parent clubs of the players. Um, the other three teams we've mentioned is England Knights, which seems pretty pretty feasible in the, in the way you're looking at international fixtures, because obviously they're going to be playing internationals at, at, the, at the end of the year. They're rumoured to be playing the uh, Jamaica team uh, this, this, this year, so this autumn. Uh, no, no official uh, confirmation as of yet, but next year... What a step up that would be, though. The, the chance to play the Kangaroos on home soil. And I think, I think the Knights would be a stern test for, for the Kangaroos. I wonder if the Knights are going to play in the European Championship next year. Because obviously there was a bit of talk about, because England were a bit unsure what was happening with Australia, that, that England had been invited to play in the 2020 European Championship with France, Italy, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. Um, I wonder whether... We might see a bit like in the old days. Well, a bit like in the old days of Great Britain last time we had England A when Paul Cullen was the coach and they played in that sort mm. of tournament. Maybe that, maybe that's what might happen next year. So if England Knights could play Australia, the Australia touring team, and then go on to play Ireland, Scotland, yeah. Wales, whatever. There's a little bit. I'm not sure whether any of them are qualifiers next year or whether the qualifiers are done this year. 
the European, yeah. uh, the you European know, for, champ- the, for the World Cup. Do you know what I mean? Euro- yeah, the European Championships were played last autumn. France won it. Um, yeah, France and Wales got qualified. And Wales, Wales qualified as well. Is it this year that the other and, places get decided? Yeah. Uh, so Scotland will play. Uh, they play like Russia. Yeah, Russia. I think, they, I think they, they have played yeah. Russia and they will play someone else. Uh, so I, I think the, the England match could be a, a, a good game for for the Australians. The other the other teams we have mentioned are Jamaica, uh, who, have, who who seem to be quite everyone's second and third favourite international team at the moment and also France who are let's face it they've not played England uh, for quite a while have they I know they played them last year but they always used to play them regularly yeah, yeah. we don't see that well I mean obviously that was the purpose of we were told that was the purpose of Catalan in Super League was to, to try and develop the, the French national team and obviously we've not really seen that um, massively over here the, the whole idea was that England would play you know a bit like it was international weekend last week you know, in theory, that should have been England should have been playing France, Wales should have been playing Scotland, but for whatever reason, it's just not happening over here. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that develops. Let's. And, and it, it'd be a big um, burst of progress for for the Reggae Warriors, the Jamaican national team as well, if they got to the chance to play Australia. Yeah, we'd expect Australia to put a big score on Jamaica. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but this is what the the tours are all about. I I, really. I, I, I I don't like. The, the comments where you know a bit like you know when when, when they had the the two thousand eight World Cup and it was a really convoluted format because they were worried about one side in score lines it was like well so what you know that's what happens you mm. can't get a perfect you know Brazil <laughs> in football Brazil played Germany in the semi finals of the World Cup and it was seven one you know what I mean and it's like you just can't you know if Australia put ninety points on Jamaica so what yeah. Jamaica have had the chance to play them and yeah. that's it you know it's a, it's, it, a, it's a big step in the right direction isn't it yeah. You uh, know. It's a, it's a midweek game. It, it, it'll only be a midweek game, but it's another international game as well. Uh, and it'll be the first ever meeting between the two sides. Uh, oh, just going back to the Manu Manu situation, uh, New Zealand Sky Sports' commentary team uh, have said Hull FC have signed Manu Ma- uh, Mao, who's a, who's a Tongan international. I said some other international before I got mixed up for the 20, 20 season uh, and beyond. Um, the, the Kiwis uh, who played Tonga. Um, last weekend, the commentator Daryl Halligan uh, said that Manu Mao will be at Hull FC next year uh, while on commentary. So uh, that's interesting stuff, and that's another uh, big forward for the black and white. Should probably expect him to replace um, Mark Minicello or or uh, and Seeker Manu. Right, let's look ahead then to this week's action. Um, again, please do leave your comments if you want us to chat about anything or you want to chip in at any point. Um, so starting tonight, Hull Derby, big game, I suppose, at, at both ends of the table. Not because Hull are pushing for anything. Hull are in this comfort blanket of third place at the moment where they've got four points behind them and four points ahead of them. But I suppose from Hull's point of view, they, they're just starting to shrug off. They've had some good performances in recent weeks. What they don't want is to get their inconsistency tagged back and, and lose this one. Hull KR, desperate for points, as is everybody in that bottom, well, in the bottom eight <laughs> of the table. Um, they've been unfortunate, haven't they, in recent weeks, of course. They, they lost narrowly against yep. Wigan. They lost narrowly against London Broncos. Um, they beat Warrington, of course. Every point crucial for Hull KR. Um, Matt Parcell, of course, coming in for... Well, we expect them to come in for his debut. Um, how do you see that one going tonight? This is a tough one. It's always hard to predict derby games. I'm I'm sorry to sound cliche, but it's just it's always a funny one with with derbies because all car could turn up and, and you probably wouldn't be surprised if they won by ten points, would you? Against what I see, um, but I'll have to I'll have to go with the black and whites because they're, they're in pretty good form at the minute. I'll go whole. You going whole? Whole by whole by. Well, by. Seven. I think I with, with, with Mark Sneed in the team. Well, I mean, they, 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 they didn't. They didn't. We were talking about this on Twitter last week. They didn't do a drop goal last week, so they must be due this week. Uh, either seven or thirteen. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's. I mean, I'd be interested in what people's thoughts are because this is the second meeting between the two sides at KCON on Craven Park this season. The first game of the season was there. It so you can. Is it this sort of game? You feel the devalue. How much the loop fixture devalues it, don't you? Because. There's always so much build up to the whole derbies that, and I'm not saying there's not been as much build up to this one, but like 
it's nowhere near like it was for the first game of the season in the Eastern. Mm. Because obviously people, you've already had it, this is almost like an extra one. And it's like, it's. A, I think it's a good example of, you, the Elute Fist just removes the intensity and yeah. build up to the fixture, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I, I do agree with you there. And it, it, I was only saying the other week as well, regarding the loop fixtures, uh, it seems like Leeds have played Wakefield every other week this yeah. season. It seems as all Castleford are on telly every other week. Um, playing a a loop fixture like we've already seen this season, uh, they're getting a little bit boring for me. I'm not gonna lie, James. Um, well, Wigan and Salford is one we've talked about yeah. as well. So, uh, so they're, they're playing each other twice, or in the space of three, four weeks over over the Easter period. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm still looking forward to it though. I, I do like the old derby. Uh, it's always intense and fiery. So good yeah, one. I'll, I'll be tuning good in. one on Sky. So uh, that's tonight's game. Friday night's game. Some interesting ones. Wakefield, Huddersfield, two teams really that they're not quite in that relegation battle at the moment, are they? But they're both nervously looking over mm. the shoulder. I mean, Huddersfield obviously level on points now, aren't they? With, um, yeah. With I feel for Wakefield at the minute because we try not make making excuses, but they are doing it so, so tough with injuries. Um, the, the bodies are just busted. They they welcome in the return of of Bill Tupu this week. Who who was fantastic for them before, um, he got injured. Tyler Randall also returns, uh, for the Giants. The Huddersfield Bond trio of um, Michael Lawrence, uh, Jermaine McGilvery, and Leroy Kudjo are in the squad this week. So that'll be a boost for the Giants. I really don't know what where to go on this one, James. Uh, I think it's Wakefield, it's you Wakefield, look at Wakefield home it's, advantage maybe. Yeah, it's at Wakefield. I think the, thing with, I think the thing with Huddersfield is they've just not built on that magic weekend performance um, against Hull. And obviously, you know, Hull were bad, but I thought Huddersfield played well at magic weekend. Matt Frawley's just not done it, has he? No, um, he's, he's, he's like the Jack Little John. I, I, yeah, I, said it, and, I, comp- I did and, that comparison at the start of the season. Um, for, for me, I would just play Lee Russell anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, like, like I've, and obviously you look at that, Russell. you look at that Magic Weekend game, um, you know, and 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 for all there was nowhere to be seen there. Russell led that one, you know, the week after they lost by a golden uh, by a drop goal to Castleford, um, Huddersfield obviously got to be careful because, you know, ultimately if Hull KR and Leeds win this weekend, it's there's, it's all of a sudden a four. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a four team battle at the moment, but everyone's talking about Leeds, London, and Hull KR at the moment, yeah. aren't they? Whereas Potentially, this time on Monday, we could be talking about four. Yeah, uh, I, I, th- I think both of them can get, could easily get sucked in right into it. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're I'll, looking I'll, at I'm going to go with Wakefield. You're, look, you're looking now that 18, 20 points might not even be enough to stay up. That, it's madness, isn't it? That That is madness to say that you might get 18 points and be relegated from two points. Um, we're going to Salford then play at the DW. Friday night. Um, this is a this is a top five battle, isn't it? Really, yeah. that Wigan. You know, for all the trials and tribulations that have gone on at Wigan this year, if they win on Friday night, they're more than likely going to be in the top five. And I said I said this a while ago, James, that Wigan will make Wigan will make the top five, and uh, it looks like I'm going to be right because I think they'll beat Salford, uh, not comfortably. Uh, I think Salford will give Wigan a run for the money. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think they're slowly, very slowly starting to sh- uh, show show some improvements in the game. They put uh, a lot of points past Huddersfield last week. Huddersfield were poor, but um, it's a positive sign for the Warriors. But it's still the defence. What what, what is it? What's a little bit um, lackluster for the Warriors at the moment? They just seem to leak points. Um, well, which which Salford could certainly capitalise on with Hastings and Wallahy. I suppose the other thing with Wigan and Salford is because Catalan are really dropping points. All of a sudden, they're, I think they're only two points behind Catalan, aren't they, mm. um, at the moment. All of a sudden, the battle for fifth spot is going to turn into a battle for fourth and fifth spot. Mm. Um, again, Hull, it's, you know, it's really great that every week we seem to be talking about permutations all the time. and It feels like it's not something we've, we've had for quite yeah, a few we've, we've years. Yeah, we've got this for, for years you, and years. You're looking at if Hull win tonight, you could almost make the argument that they're sort of on the coattails of Warrington. Yeah. And if Catalan lose this week, all of a sudden Catalan are in this massive block of teams, this you know, roadblock of teams behind, aren't they? Yeah, certainly. And, and even 
we're looking at Hall Warrington. Hall Warrington could actually swap places. Uh, if if Hall win this week, Warrington lose, and then, and then, next, then week, yeah. next week, uh, it, it's like the snowball effect. But I, I I'm unsure on Catalans. I I don't I I honestly do not know how the Dragons are fourth because every time I've watched Catalans this year, they've been absolutely terrible. Apart they, from a new camp. They, Apart from a new camp, they've been terrible. Um, yeah, I must admit, so I mean, you know, I, 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 yeah, but I mean, it's unbelievably inconsistent. I think the games that I think about is them getting snotted by Salford at home. Snotted by Wigan away when Wigan were really down in the got, Obviously, Hull, Hull did a number on them last week, didn't they? And, you know, it's a bit of a strange one, but they're still yes. there, they're fourth. Mm. Uh, but, but then they beat St. Helens. Yeah. I'm more interested. Yeah. So, um, Speaking of Warrington and St. Helens, they play each other in uh, the televised game on Friday night. I mean, really, first week, second, should be a big game, but obviously we're all talking about relegation. Um, we're all talking about Wolfie. Well, we're all talking about Wolfie, yeah. Now, this is an interesting one because if St. Helens win this one, Lee Leader Shield in the back? Cause they're, yeah, they're yeah, way because they're way ahead, aren't they? What, are they six? It's... Six points, yeah, they don't have to play Warrington again, then, do they? No, and, you know, you can't see, say, you yeah. know, what they've lost, yeah. they've lost two all yeah, season. You can't really see them. And that's it's a nice little costly number, isn't it, for them? Obviously, you get £100,000 prize money for winning League Leaders Shield. I, 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 hope, I hope they celebrate <laughs> yeah. I hope they celebrate it more than they did last year. Oh, I th- well, I hope they've learned a lesson from last year, James, um, because. They did. No one smiled. I don't think anyone smiled, did they? I think you celebrate because well, I just season. think you say this is a great achievement. We finished first. Let's build it up. Let's say right, we're <laughs> champions. Because I just think you you put by being miserable about it, you put pressure on yourself because you're almost saying, well, we've done all this hard work over twenty seven games, whatever it is, and 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 then you're saying, oh, well, we're not bothered about that. And it almost like it's like a morale thing. Whereas if you were up beat and you're giving it the old we are the champions stuff, that gives you a bit of belief and confidence going into the playoffs now of course the player format's different this year so St Helens if they do finish first and they do lose the first game like they did last year they will at least get another chance yeah um, um, I, I just hope that, I, I just hope they learn how to celebrate it because they didn't say a piece of silver they it's, need to get rid of it they need to get rid of that league leader's shield and get a proper trophy make yeah, it something yeah. that players are proud to win because yeah okay they're not called the Super League champions but it still should be an achievement Call it something better than the league leader's shield because it sounds that. Call it the premiership, like they used. To, I mean, mm-hmm. it was a reverse of the. No, just call it something worthwhile winning. Do you know what I mean? And you know, I think that it just it just looks like, like a big fag astro, doesn't it? Well, I mean, I was at. I, I seen um, there was a runner. It looks no doubt, and no word of a lie, a non-league football playoff runner-up shield. A, a club I visited this week, probably exactly the same as the league leader's shield. And I'm thinking, Jesus, come on. Um, more Super League. Oh, who do you think then? Do you think Warwick will beat Saints? No. No? I, I think, I so think we're, going, we're going Wakefield, Saints, Wigan, yeah? I think, I think Saints will win. Um, but they've, they've not got James Robb, have they, Saints? Um, which could be a, a big blow. Because oh, having a player like James Robb is... Well, because Darryl Clark, yeah, yeah, cause Darryl Clark yeah. Dominate, could potentially dominate yeah, the game. But, but, but Aaron, Aaron Smith, to be fair to, to the young lad, Aaron Smith at Saints, he's been performing very, very well since he got in that side. Um, Sunday, Leeds, Catalan at Headingley. Big game for Leeds, obviously. Um, all eyes will be mm. on how Louis goes, how Sean Lunt goes. Um Catalan, obviously. I mean, it's probably a good time to play Catalan. Oh, I've won't go Catalan Watkins. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not, you know, probably a good time to play Catalan. But you know, Catalan are one of them teams that you, you, you could probably see them turning up and, <laughs> and doing some. You, you won't be surprised if Catalan's run out thirty points to ten winners. You, you won't be surprised if <laughs> Catalan's lost thirty <laughs> points to ten. Um, it, I, I've got to go for Lee. I probably. If the game were at Catalan, I'd probably tip Catalan, but seeing as it, it, it's at Leeds and uh, Catalans don't want to court with getting on a plane just yet um, after 10 years in Super League, I'll go with, uh, I'll go with Leeds. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm being a bit, I'm being a bit harsh on Catalan. Castle, Castle but, uh, the, other game, the other game's Castle for London. Um, Castle would have been very indifferent. Castle are almost in a bit of a black hole, aren't they? Because no one's really talking about them as... They're sort of they're not in the top five, but then they're not in the bottom bit. They are sort of in this vacuum in the middle of the table at the moment where if they win a couple they'll be in the top five. Yeah. But then if they keep losing, 
They might end up getting sucked in. They've just... They've been... I don't know. They've, they've been so... They've been another inconsistent team this year. Castleford. They've... Was it? Was it? They've got. They've won. They've won the first four, and they've not won back to back games since. I'm sure that that's what the. Uh, right. I, know, I, I, know, I know they've had their injury problems, and Alex Foster has been a miss. Oliver Holmes has been a miss. Junior Moles is now injured. Uh, obviously, they had that period where they didn't have Jesse Senna fail because he was on compassionate leave. Um, obviously, no, no Luke Gale as well. So they are having it tough with injuries, to be fair, but. Yeah, they've just been okay. They've, they've not they've not blew me away. They've, uh, but I've not thought they're they're they're, they're going to be um, yeah. They've they're, just been they've just coasted along, haven't they? And, uh, at home though, they, they are very very good at home, and you've got to think with London because they're going so well at the minute. Is it three on the trot for London? Yeah, two on the trot. It's three on the trot, and they've um, they won five last six or four last yeah, five or something but, like that. But you've got to think. This momentum will slow down at some point, uh, and I think this week could be it. Um, I'm, so yeah, I'll tip Castleford to. Of course, if London happen. win, uh, sorry, no, if Hull KR win and Leeds lose, Leeds will be bottom. Um, leave that one in there. Championship. Um, some interesting games in Championship this week. Barrow against Toulouse um, is a Sunday. Fit. They're all Sunday actually. Barrow Toulouse, Batley Toronto, Bradford Witness, Halifax Featherston, Rochdale Swinton. Sheffield Lee and York against Dewsbury. Um, all three pm kickoffs. All with a three pm kickoff. Yeah. Um, interesting tweets last night from Kev Field, Bradford fan who'd done a bit of research. I'm going to rip this off for an article a little bit later on. Um, he'd done a bit of research on players, loan and dual reg players. Now, Featherston have signed Will Dagger on loan from Hull KR. If he plays on Sunday, he'll be the 20th, 2 0 player that Featherston have used this season on loan or dual reg that's it's unbelievable you could literally, you could literally get so, that's, that, no, that's a squad uh, that you're so, so, so Fe- for only have 20, 25 Fe- squad Fe- players Fe- this year bear in mind Featherston were playing games with 14 men at the end of last season because they'd chopped everyone to save money and it's just it's a bit of a disgrace isn't it that um, I think I think Rochdale were next to 13 Lee and York had used 12 but um, credit to some clubs Toulouse have used 2 Witness have used 1 Barrow haven't used any, which is a fair credit to them. But we had Dave Parkinson, who, who's not here um, today, but we had him on, on the co- on the coach uh, the other week, and he, he was actually speaking to Barrow coach Paul Crary, who was uh, big on bringing through the youth in Cumbria. Uh, they've got uh, a good partnership with Barrow and Furness College. Well, look at like, like uh, Barrow, a good sign for Barrow is uh, obviously Liam, Liam Paisley, obviously, he's from Ulverston, he's a local lad. Released by Wigan for whatever reason, Barrow have signed him. He's a good, he's a good signing for them. Yeah, made his um, debut last night. Um, going back to Featherstone, I, I assume they're, they're not expecting to to have Ashton Golden this weekend. Then if they sign Will Dagger, well, I mean they could all play, couldn't they? They just, I don't know. I don't know. What, I, don't, I dare to think what squad number they're up to. That they're pushing fifty. But I think the point is, is I think there needs to be a limit put in place, doesn't there? I think I if. Thought, if, if but you, have reserves. you can you can play is it you can play five you've allowed five in total maximum four dual reg so you can have four dual reg in a loan um, and have five in total on a match day but is it time to do a bit like football where you can have so many on a match day but you're only allowed so many across the season so you know maybe cap it at I don't know I mean I think five is enough but let's say you can have eight maximum over the season because 20 is obscene isn't it 20 is obscene even Rochdale with 13 you know you look at Barrow Barrow are trying to stay up aren't they they're competing with Rochdale to stay up and Rochdale are using 13 players that aren't theirs and Barrow are trying to build their own squad and develop and whatever it's just and the other thing is how damaging is it to the integrity of the competition as well because Featherstone one week they might have five or six players from Leeds, and obviously there's the argument that Leeds are naff, so having Leeds players doesn't make much of a difference, before anyone says it. But one week Feverston might have five or six players from Leeds, but then the next week they yeah, might yeah. not. Yeah. Like Lee's a good example. That, I mean, I know Lee have sort of eased off it a little bit now, but Lee, Lee started with Luke Douglas on loan from Saints and four dual reds from no, Saints. That's what they've they, 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 they still got. They had four last night. But... 
when Lee played, I, I mean, I, obviously I was at this game, so I'll just pull this as an example. On Good Friday, Lee played Witness, but obviously because it was the Easter weekend, they didn't have the full mm. quota of dual reds players, and Witness beat them. Now, I'm not saying Witness wouldn't have beat them without them, but ultimately that Lee team was a different proposition to the week previous when they played whoever they played. And I think that's where it's a little bit, you know, it sort of skews the results, doesn't it? Because it's like, oh, oh we beat Featherstone, oh, well, yeah, yeah but did they have the four or five lads from Leeds, did they have Harry Newman, did they, do you know what I mean? It's well, it, 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 was, it was like that with, like Danny Richardson was putting that position earlier on in the season, he played for, for Lee the week before, um, he played against Wigan in the Good Friday derby, uh, <laughs> which uh, which is uh, obviously a massive uh, change in intensity for Richardson himself, but but that's the that's position we're, we're in at the moment uh, with, with the rugby league because the reserves isn't in yet, we expect it to be next year, but because it's not there now, do we where, think, where, do, where do these fringe players go? I suppose two things here, do we think dual reds will be abolished when reserves come in, or do we foresee a situation where reserves games are going to be played midweek, and so reserve, you could play for Leeds reserves on a Wednesday and then play for Featherstone on a Sunday? Hopefully not, because that, that, ain't that just putting, putting the fringe players on an Easter schedule? Because they could potentially play four games within two weeks, twelve days, ah. um, which is is definitely not good, We're, especially as a, as a young player coming through. We're not overly um, sure what's happening now, but by the sounds of it, what, 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 what my suggestion would be is scrapping Joe Reg, but you can have loans, but they have to be at least a month long. Yeah. So 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 obviously you'll have your reserves. So if 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 um you you. Your leads are playing on a Friday night. The the reserves will play on the Saturday. So whoever whoever's not played for on the, that Friday can play on the Saturday. Mm. Um, but then if, if they are genuinely um, young players who want to go for for game time and stuff. So for example, Ashton Golding, he could sign a month at Featherstone and then he could extend it a month at Featherstone. But you can't go one week I'll play for Fair and then I'll, I'll come back to Leeds and then I'll put, go and play for Fair and then come back to Leeds. Is there, a, is there an argument that there should be regionalised reserve teams? So I know last year a proposal got knocked back for a Manchester team which would have effectively acted as Salford's reserve team but Rochdale, Oldham, Swinton could have made use of it as evidence. Because for me, you know, in all due respect to Keith Lee and Halifax and Featherstone who are running reserves, I think there's a couple of others who have forgotten about is there any point in Keithley running a reserve team? Because, to me, have they not just got players that would otherwise be playing amateur rugby for somebody? Yeah. And I think that's the thing for me. I think the Super League teams need reserves. I don't really see much point in teams lower down having the reserves because I just think you're just taking players really away from amateur clubs. Mm. Whereas, and that's where the regionalised thing is comes in. Is well, could, about, do, do, do you do it where you say, right, okay, well, we'll have a, you know, we'll, like, we'll have a, a, a Cheshire team that's Warrington's a reserve team but that Witness can make use of. We have a Manchester team that is Salford reserves but that Swinton and Rochdale Oldham can make use of. You have St Helens which could be a Liverpool team. You, you know, the York City man, I don't know how you break Yorkshire but like you'd have Leeds you'd have, you'd have Castleford, Castleford and Wakefield and Featherstone could tie into the same team. You know, is that something that you could maybe look at? You know, I don't know. But, Possibly. Um, before we finish, five minutes left, let's look at um, League One. Uh, there's uh, five games this week. Saturday is Coventry Doncaster. Um, Coventry. That's a, I think, is that their league app, I think? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, might be a good shout. Um, obviously, Coventry are always capable of a result. They're playing, um, they are, of course, playing at Webb Ellis Road yeah. now because uh, the ground's getting redone. Um, London Scholars Whitehaven, which feels like they played recently, didn't they? Because Scholars are up there. Whitehaven lost at home last week to North Wales Crusaders, so um, a chance for scholars maybe to to you know keep yeah. up there. We, we're still not quite sure what's happening with Championship next season, whether there'll be additional promotion spots and whatnot. Yeah. Um, as things stand, the champions will go up and the playoff winners. Um, Sunday, North Wales, Keith Lee, so North Wales with a good win last week, want to back that up. Newcastle against Workington, uh, and Oldham against your mates, West Wales Raiders, who are still... My mates? I don't know. You like that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the uh, on our league this weekend, Dave sent us an email. What I've just uh, got. Oh, go on. On. Dave, Dave's on the job uh, commentating for the old league app this weekend. Saturday, bet for League One, Coventry v Doncaster. Uh, Sunday, 11 30 a.m., Champion School Year 7 final, Castleford Academy versus Wigan St. John Fisher. 
Uh, and then at 1pm, it's uh, the Women's Super League between Wakefield Trinity and Wigan Warriors. On the hour league out with Dave Parkinson, yours truly. Well, very good. So that's been uh, your Rugby League lunch hour for today. Uh, please do listen again or watch again if you've missed it or you've just joined us. Leave some available. comments. Yeah, leave some comments. We'll get back to you. Um, we will release as a podcast as usual as well please do keep an eye out on the site loverubbleague.com for all the latest and from me and from Drew it's see you next week